Welcome to Grace for Dyslexia. Today we address hope. This is podcast number four. When Nathan was a small boy, his parents would marvel at his trying tasks over and over again. It may have been something like tying his shoes, but Nathan kept trying. If he would become frustrated, he'd put the task aside for some time but he would seem to always come back to it. Nathan seemed to come back with a new plan of attack. Nathan became very good at learning from many attempts until he had the problem figured out. He grew as a person, one who was patient and understanding of others' efforts. He was always willing to share in helping someone else with their own problems. Somehow Nathan knew to keep trying, no matter how hard something seemed, that a solution would come from all the hard work. As he continued to develop, Nathan also learned to see his persistence as hope. Hope in finding a new way to solving a problem. Hope in his world. The people he knew drove Nathan to strive even more. As Nathan progressed in school, he found himself having difficulty with reading stories and spelling words on the weekly spelling test. He tried every way and spent hours working extra hard to learn to improve his reading and spelling, but nothing seemed to work. He asked for help, but the help did not make sense to Nathan. He gradually became saddened by his inability to figure out his struggles with language. Doubt crept into his thinking about other problems and his abilities. His view of himself became less and less as he realized he could not rely on his own problem-solving to fix his language problems. The light of hope was dwindling in Nathan's eyes and heart as his frustration grew. He needed to get help. He needed a new plan. He needed something else to rely on, some other source of hope. His parents saw their son's self-doubt and his turning away from his strength of solving problems. They were very concerned and sought help for him through a friend of theirs who tutored children. First, Nathan was hesitant and afraid of being tutored. He was so used to being self-sufficient in his problem-solving, this seemed like a step backward. He was respectful of his tutor's efforts and tried to understand. At first, he did not see how learning about vowel sounds and vowel spellings were going to be a help him in reading and spelling when he was expected in school to perform on a much more difficult tasks. But he persisted, as he had always done, while working alongside his tutor. Then, months later, he was at tutoring, and his tutor was talking to him about the long vowel spellings for A. Nathan learned that there were patterns and percentages in making choices about what long vowel spelling to use. He said to himself, That's it! The light of hope shined again in his eyes and heart. The following week in school, he was working on his spelling words, and he noticed that the list that week had some of those long vowel spellings. Nathan recalled what his tutor had shown him. He went on to use that knowledge to find strategies to learn to spell the words on his list. Later that week, Nathan was reading a story in class and came across a word he did not recognize. But he did recognize the vowel spelling in that word as one his tutor had taught him. He knew its sound, and he used what else he knew to decode the word st r a n d it all started to make sense sunday nathan went to church with his parents as usual he was not interested in what was being said then the pastor began to use the word hope nathan having found a renewed sense of hope took notice But the pastor's message was not about the hope you find in solving your own problems, but the hope found in Jesus. The hope that comes from his having suffered for us. The hope 
that whatever we suffer, Jesus is always there to help us. Nathan walked out of church that day with a deeper understanding of what hope is. On the ride home, he asked his parents, What do you do to have hope? His parents looked at each other, at first questioning, then with expressions of love and compassion for their son. His father turned the question back to Nathan. Tell us what you think hope is. Nathan stumbled at first to find the right words, the right thoughts. He then said, Hope for me used to be finding the answer, solving the problem, completing the task. But now, after working with my tutor and hearing about the hope that comes from Jesus, I now know that hope is bigger than anything I can do. His mother replied, My hope comes from my belief in Jesus. My prayers are my way of finding answers to my problems. Jesus does not always provide the answers as I would like. Hope comes from the desire for and the patience to wait on an answer. Then his father said, Nathan, our finding you a tutor and watching you learn and understand language is a gift from God. Our prayers, our hope for you to learn and find answers to your reading and spelling were answered through finding your tutor. Nathan began to weep. Tears formed in the corners of his eyes. His mother looked at him from the front seat and asked, What's the matter? At first, Nathan was unable to form an answer. Then, he squeakily managed to say, I am just so thankful for the hope of my Lord Jesus and learning to read and spell. Inspired by Romans chapter 5, verses 3 through 5, we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. There is hope in dyslexia. Persevere. Share, grow, and learn. Use your strengths. How can you share hope with others who struggle with dyslexia? Grace for Dyslexia is a podcast dedicated to Christian encouragement for children and adults who have or are struggling with dyslexia. All stories in Grace for Dyslexia are fiction. Names, characters, places, and events are the product of the author's imagination. Any similarities to actual events, locales, or persons, living or dead, is coincidental.